Hello and welcome to Business Analytics. This is Hari Rajagopalan and in this session we are going to discuss uh, models which look at trend and seasonality. So let's talk about, you know, we finished descriptive analytics. We are now firmly in predictive analytics. Uh, we are deep into time series models where we're looking at time as the predictor and then demand and other kind of issues as the predicted model. And we talked about level models. We talked about models with level and seasonality. We talked about models with level and trend. Now we're focusing on level, trend, and seasonality. So let's look at, we talked about trend being positive or negative, right? Trend can be upwards positive, downwards negative. There are two types of seasonal effects, additive and multiplicative, and you should all know the difference between the two. In additive seasonal effects, the magnitude does not change. The up and down motion is pretty much the same, whereas in multiplication, it kind of keeps increasing and expands. Forecasting with trend and seasonality is called Halt Winters method because Halt Winter figured it out. And we have an additive model where we are adding level, trend, and seasonality, and this n will be equal to 1 if you take the trend from the previous time period. But if trend, especially when you're forecasting for a year which does not have data, as you go down further and further away from where there's data, this n increases. Multiplicative, in this case, you're adding level and trend and you're multiplying seasonality. Now, uh, I want you to understand in some books, if you, especially when you go deep into forecasting, there is a there is a more purer form of multiplicative where it's level multiplied by trend multiplied by seasonality. We are not going to look at it in this um, particular class because that is very rare. It's on rare occasions that we use it. But when you see books which do that, they call this model a mixed model because there is one addition and one multiplication. But we will use multiplication when we talk about level plus trend. And then this whole thing is multiplied by seasonality. A lot of times students make the mistake of just adding trend and then multiplying by seasonality without putting the brackets in. And if you don't use the parentheses, then seasonality is just multiplying trend and does not use the level plus trend. So the smoothing parameters we're going to use as alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha is the percentage of new data you're going to use to update level. Beta is the percentage of new data you're going to use to update trend. And gamma is the percentage of new data up to update seasonality. So let's take an example. We are continuing with this whole watercraft incorporated, which we're looking at quarters, and we have five years of data. So here is the data. We have the quarters. And here are the graphs which we are using. And you could see 2012, there is definitely positive trend here. And then there is some seasonality. Quarter one is high, quarter two is lower, quarter three is slightly higher, and quarter four is there, right? And of course, 2016, there's a nice big jump in, in demand data, especially 2014, 2015, and 2016. So nice positive trend, good bit of seasonality with a drop in quarter two and then increasing three and four okay so obviously we need to do then a seasonal and trend related uh forecasting method so remember now we always start with first year in initialization so here the first year initialization we start with each seasonal value for each quarter we take the actual and subtract it from the average demand for each year the level for the last time period of the first year is actual demand minus seasonal factor and trend is also given zero. Uh, this, you can print this out and keep it in, in a sheet and then it makes more sense when you look at the Excel file. And so here are the formulas for um, um, the calculations uh, starting from second year. Uh, and this is the example for a forecast. I'm not going to read it out to you. You can read this uh, and I'll show you what we need to do in the Excel file. Similarly, calculations for level. 
use alpha as your smoothing factor. And here's the example. Notice that when I said seasonal, here alpha is multiplied by demand for that time period. So let's say level for time period five is demand for five. And when you subtract the previous year's seasonality from this demand, then you're basically, when you're removing seasonality, that's de-seasonalized data, and that's pretty much level. And then here it's one minus alpha level from the previous time period. Remember this is time period five, so you're looking at four and plus the trend. And so again, for trend, you're gonna use um, beta uh, as your smoothing factor. Here you're, you're taking the level for the current time period, subtracting it from the level from the previous time period. And our assumption is that the difference between these two levels is because of trend. And so you're taking maybe 10% or 20% of it. And the rest of it is the old trend. And same thing for seasonality. Here you're taking the actual demand, subtracting level. And then if you remove level from the demand, that's just seasonal effect. And then here is the previous seasonal factor. And that's what you get. Okay. So let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to do this in Excel to get this, uh, um, essentially, this, this graph. All right, so here is the setup. Let's also open up the solver. All right, so remember that we start off with alpha, beta, gamma. We initialize a value. It could be 10%, it could be 50%, it could be 90%. Sometimes it's better to try it with three different values, and that's okay, okay? We are going to minimize our MSC. Uh, these are your changing cells, and these are all less than one and greater than zero, okay? So the first step, you look at the first year, and you're gonna initialize it. So initialization, seasonal factor, remember it's actual minus the average. You can just use average instead of average A, uh, that's okay. And because I wanted to copy this down, I've used the dollar sign here, okay? Similarly, this is your actual minus the seasonal factor and trend is assumed to be zero, okay? So here, let me go ahead and show you, this is what you're gonna see now. So then the first thing you're gonna do after this is to actually do the forecast first. So you, let's go ahead and do the forecast and that's gonna be your level, plus trend, plus the seasonal factor from the time period, same quarter, right? Right here. So that's your seasonality. Then you're gonna calculate your level. So to calculate level, that'll be alpha, right? And then you're gonna put an F4, and then you're going to say, if you go down here, actual time period minus seasonal from the same season. Okay, so then it's actual, that's D7 minus G3, right? Plus one minus alpha plus the previous time period's level plus trend, okay? Same thing you're gonna do with trend, and but you're gonna use beta. Again, you're gonna put F4 here. And then you're going to look at beta, you're gonna look at the formula for trend, level for the time period minus level for the previous time period, and that's what you have, this minus this, plus one minus beta, and the previous trend you give that. And finally, you have seasonality, which is your, your actual minus level for the same season, and then one minus gamma times the previous seasonal factor. Remember, don't forget to put the dollars for alpha, beta, and gamma. So once you have this, you can copy this down all the way up to this point, right? You can copy these formulas down. But then when you come here, you are going to focus on the trend and level get stuck, right? Because you don't have any more data here. So trend and level is only this period. So every time you go further away from the trend, you got to multiply it by N increases, right? There's two here and then three and so on, okay? So this is the additive method. All right and we let's go let's stop here and then go back and look at the multiplicative method but the only difference in them from the additive method to the multiplicative method is that you will put these level plus trend will be go into a bracket and seasonal factor will be multiplied and every time we are 
calculating. So for example, here, instead of subtracting seasonality, you'll be dividing seasonality. Um, trend, I don't think trend changes. And then here, again, instead of for seasonal factor, instead of subtracting, you'll be dividing. That's the only difference you're going to see from additive to multiplicative. Okay, so now let's go to the next part, which is the formulas for multiplicative trend and multiplicative seasonality. So you notice that instead of subtracting, now you're dividing it. Same thing here, there's a division sign. And I'll show it to you in Excel. Same thing for the calculations. Don't forget to put the brackets. A lot of you tend to just say level plus trend multiplied by season without the brackets. You need the brackets. Um, and then here is the same set of calculations. You can see that here instead of subtracting it, you're dividing. And the same, if you look at trend, it doesn't really change the formulas for seasonality. Again, it's division rather than. So it's, it's not very hard. You just have to change a few pieces of data. So let's go back to Excel and look at what are the changes from additive to multiplicatives. All right, so again, you start off with alpha, beta, and gamma at around 10%. And please note that we are minimizing our mean squared error by changing alpha, beta, and gamma, and alpha, beta, and gamma are, are greater than zero, less than one. If you use this engine and assume non-negative is true, you don't have to put this greater than zero. It just automatically assumes that these changing variables are greater than zero. So let's look at the small changes. Let me go ahead and um, let's go ahead and make that disappear. So first thing we do is to take each value and divide it by the average to look at the seasonal factor. Here it's 93.5% of the average, 79.9% of the average, 104.6% of the average, and 122% of average. That's the initialization. Trend initial value is zero, and here we go. All right. So remember that, again, this is, and I keep repeating this because I've seen students do this mistake multiple times. <laughs> If you have monthly data, which is most likely what I'm going to give you, you should not then just do up to four. You have to get the first year's data and you have to do it for the entire um, first year. Okay. So now the next thing is to actually go and do the forecast, which is this plus this multiply. So remember here, there is, there is a bracket here so it's actually adding this first and then multiplying it okay the then you do the level right and i'm not going to go over in detail because it's pretty obvious the only difference here you can follow this formula here all right um level you can just follow the formula and it's pretty straightforward um here this should be plus not minus and these should be plus all right uh, and then here same thing here you follow the formula trend is beta and that's not doesn't change from and then the seasonality again you divide this by this and then you take one minus gamma times that and the whole thing comes through and here when you do this make sure that you are multiplying trend by the number of time periods it's away from the data okay so this is pretty this should be pretty simple you should all be able to do it um, and practice is the best way to get kind of learn how to do it so up to this point, we have looked at forecasting models, which are adaptive, which is that the trend, seasonality, uh, and level change with every time period, which is why you have your alpha, beta, and gamma having some values. Now, if alpha, beta, and gamma, when you optimize it, and alpha, beta, and gamma came out to be zero, 
That means you're not using any data, new data, to update your level, trend, and seasonality. And those are called static models. So if you ever run some data and then you optimize it and your alpha, beta, and gamma come out to be zero, then you're basically saying 0% of new data is being used to update level, 0% to update trend, 0% to update seasonality. And when you have that, the level, trend, and seasonality, which you're actually calculating, will not change. It'll just remain the same. So what, whatever the initial value is, that's, that's all it's going to be. So let's look at static models and let's figure out how we're going to use regression to resolve these static models.